The human respiratory system exchanges oxygen from the air for carbon dioxide produced by the body. The center of the system is the lungs, two elastic cone-shaped sacs that nearly fill the chest cavity. The actual mechanism where the gas exchange occurs is the alveoli, a tiny cluster of air sacs. When we inhale through our nose and mouth, air passes through the trachea and infiltrates the lungs through a network of tubes whose branches become finer and finer until they reach the clusters of alveoli. The alveoli are surrounded by capillaries, minute blood vessels that allow the blood to absorb oxygen. These capillaries also allow the blood to release its carbon dioxide, which is then exhaled. Breathing is accomplished with the diaphragm, a strong muscle under the lungs. During inhalation, the diaphragm and rib cage expand the chest cavity, causing the lungs to suck in air with fresh oxygen. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes, compressing the lungs to force out the air with waste carbon dioxide. The network of air tubes spreading out just like the branches and twigs of a tree form the structure of the lungs. The trachea or windpipe divides into two bronchi and these on entering the lungs divide into bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs and individual alveoli. The right ventricle of the heart pumps deoxygenated blood into the lungs via the pulmonary arteries. At the alveoli gaseous exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place between air in the lungs and blood in surrounding capillaries. The respiratory system provides oxygen to the body's cells and removes carbon dioxide. Air containing oxygen enters the body through the nose and mouth, travels through the windpipe, and into the branching airways of the lungs called bronchi. Here, through thin-walled sacs covered by capillaries, oxygen passes through the lung tissue and goes into the bloodstream, where it locks on to red blood cells. Further in the bloodstream, the blood cells squeeze through more capillaries. Here, oxygen unhooks from the red blood cells and crosses into other body cells to be used for life-maintaining chemical reactions. When this process is reversed, carbon dioxide waste from the chemical reactions enters the bloodstream and is exhaled from the body. All cells need oxygen. It is the essential fuel which is necessary to enable cells to stay alive and to carry out their various activities. Bringing oxygen to the cells requires the uptake of oxygen from the air in the lungs, its transportation in the blood, and its delivery to cells all over the body. The first step is the taking up of oxygen by blood flowing through fine capillaries in the walls of the lungs air sacs or alveoli. The oxygen molecules change from their state as a gas freely circulating in the air dissolving into a solution in the plasma within the capillaries of the alveoli. Once in the solution of the blood, 98% of this dissolved oxygen is taken up by passing red cells leaving just 2% remaining in the physical solution unattached. Red cells are particularly well suited to transporting oxygen because they contain a special oxygen binding protein known as hemoglobin. Each molecule of hemoglobin itself contains four molecules of heme, an iron containing pigment which binds oxygen loosely and reversibly. It is heme which makes it possible for the red cells to pick up oxygen dissolved in the blood.
transport it combined with hemoglobin and release it back into the blood as oxygen in solution, ready for delivery to the various cells of the body. Hemoglobin gives up its oxygen as red cells travel through capillaries in tissues where there is a low content or partial pressure of oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen represents the level of dissolved oxygen in plasma. As oxygen is released and again is carried in solution, the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillaries becomes greater than the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding tissues. This causes oxygen to move out of the capillaries into the tissues and to finally reach the cells. 